Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share some thoughts with you. Um, you'll see from my presentation, I have a completely different view to irrigation than <laughs> Linda has. And, and you, from, from, our, from my presentation, you'll see why. Um, the wine economy has developed uh, a second phase, as we call it, the, the wine um, tourist industry. Uh, and that's a huge generator of money in the Western Cape. Uh, people come to the farms to taste wine, buy farms. The farmers have um, chalets where they can stay over. Uh, a lot of weddings take place on the farm. So he developed into a total economy of his own, supporting the, the, the wine industry. Um, what we'd like to share with you is what our government is doing in the Western Cape province of South Africa to, 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 to support our farmers. Okay. Okay, okay. to support our farmers currently, but also facing um, the impacts of climate change. So I'll, I'll basically touch on, on the following aspects. Uh, look at the limited water sources, some challenges, global warming, our smart agri project, a fruit loop project, research handbook, and then a take home message. Now, Benjamin Franklin said many years ago, when the well is dry, we learn the worth of water. We take it for granted they will always have water. But once you open the tap and there's no water, then you realize the value. And we experienced this in the Western Cape over the last three years when we had a severe drought. And most of you probably heard of the so-called day zero concept that we had, uh, where the planning was done that at a certain stage, the taps to all the urban areas in the city of Cape Town would be closed down. Uh, and you have to go and collect your 25 liters per person per day from a central point. And I don't think anybody wants to go there. So once again, we appreciate um, having water available. If you look at the annual rainfall, um, unfortunately, we're not blessed with high rainfall. Uh, our rainfall is only about 470 millimeters a year against the world average of almost double that. And then we've got an additional problem, uh, a challenge that we get 80% of that in five months. It's not evenly spread across the year. So we see, um, we have a couple of areas where our rainfall is on the eastern seaboard and then in the Cape Town area, mainly the mountain areas. The challenge that we face, if you look at the rainfall since um, 1993, uh, this is the Cape Town National Weather Office, you can see there's a steady decline over the last 30 odd years. And that's a worrying sign to us. Is that trend going to continue? or will it change? And remember, that started long before we were talking about climate change. As I said, this is from 1993 onwards. Then we get to global warming. Everybody is well aware of that. Um, and it presents special challenges for us. Um, one of our towns called Friedendal um, in the West Coast in October 27, 20, um, 2015, the highest temperature ever on Earth for the month of October was measured at Friedenthal. The highest temperature ever on Earth for the month of, of October. Some of the current trends of future predictions, see it doesn't look good for us. Uh, increase of between one and, one and one and a half degrees. Uh, also a decrease in rainfall. So over the long term, we, we experience, um, we'll probably experience severe challenges. It is predicted that the Western Cape will probably be the province most affected by climate change in our country. So I think for us, it's, it's there. Uh, climate change is happening, and we learn to live with it. Temperatures will increase. As a result of that, evaporation and evapotranspiration will increase. Rainfall, the forecast, a reduction in the Western Cape. Storms and rainfall may become more intense. Steam runoff should follow. Uh, impact on erosion and water quality can result from that, and it's uncertain how many of that water will reach our storage dams. Charles Darwin said many years ago, it's not the strongest of species that survive, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. And I think that is the challenge for us. How are we going to adapt to this challenge? And now, it's not a picture of myself that. Huh? So, so some solutions for agriculture, what, what we've done up to date. Uh, the first one I want to share is what we call the Smart Agri Project. 
Uh, there's been a climate change project going on in the Western Cape for about 15 years already, but not, not one specifically aimed at the agricultural sector. And this one was developed and launched in um, 2016. And we've identified, amongst others, 23 agroclimatic zones uh, where the wine is produced uh, is the circled areas, and you see the 23 uh, agroclimatic zones. And for each of those zones, predictions were made on what can be expected in future. This is an example for a town called Lutzville. You can see that the gray is the observed um, number of hot days above 33, uh, 36 degrees C, and the red one is the projected additional number of, of hot days that we can expect. Uh, and this was developed for all of those areas. And you can see, unfortunately for us, this is our grape harvesting season, January, February, March. So you can see there's a big challenge with additional warm days that we'll experience. From that, we, we developed a couple of recommendations to the farmers. Of course, improved management of the water resources, best management in soil fertility and conservation, in, integ integ integrated production of wine, the best practices, natural hazards and pest disease outbreaks will probably increase. Uh, increased efficiencies in energy use, we'll have to look at that. Um, and also reduce the synthetic nitrogen fertilizer. There's a couple of recommendations that came from that. Then I want to share with you also a project we call Fruit Look, an innovative method to increase water use efficiency in agriculture. Unfortunately, very, very few of our wine producing areas can produce grapes under dry land conditions. Um, remember, we get our rain in winter, our big demand is in summer, so we need to store the winter we need in, in, in summer, we need to store it in winter to have it available for um, irrigation in, in summer. And this is where we brought in satellite technology to assist us in, in developing the information that we provide to our farmers. Now, the aim of the project is to, to, through satellite products, um, provide information on growth, water, and minerals. We produce that information once a week. We provide it to, for an uh, area of about 200,000 hectares of fruit. The total area covered is more than 9.5 million hectares. And there's a, a, a website address. You can go and have a look there and play around to see what information is, is available there. And that information is available to every farmer in the Western Cape free of charge, because the department carry the cost. The objective of what we want to do is we want to increase what we call uh, the water use efficiency, or the so-called crop per drop. We want to increase the, the, the yield produced per cubic meter of water. Now, you can do that by either producing the same um, kilograms with less water, or you can increase your production with the same amount of water. But the aim is to increase the water use efficiency. That information is then available, as I said, for the whole Western Cape province. We started off uh, only with the delineated areas there because of cost um, limitations. In the early days, we used the DMC satellite images from the UK. Now, luckily, the Sentinel images is available, which is available free of charge. And that allowed us to, to expand uh, the, the area covered over the whole province. We provide that information to our farmers. So they can, on a weekly basis, see how much water did my crop use, the exact the ET? How much did it use in the previous week? And that can give some guidance on the irrigation required in the next week. There you can see some of the information you can get on, on the growth, the moisture, and the minerals. And you can, and you can get it on a field-by-field -field basis um, that you can interpret and see what, what, what can be um, gained from that. Of course, we need to do all of that is, is calculated without one person stepping foot on one farm, taking any measurement. All is derived from satellite images, from D, um, DM um, uh, models, and from weather station information. But to make sure that we're accurate with the information, we need to also have a, a parallel running process where we need some, or do some uh, research on the actual crop water use. And you can see there's a very good correlation between the measure and, and the information that we provide from the satellite images. There's the, satellite, uh, the website again, if you want to look at that. Then I want to sh uh, show you the, uh, the last um, aspect with you is a handbook for irrigation of wine grapes. Uh, one of our big um, guys did the research 
in, in one, over the last 42 years, Dr. Philip Mayberg has compiled this book. It's basically a summary of, all, of his research. And that book is available also, uh, luckily, on, as a, an e-book. There you can see that there's a link if you want to, to download from there. And it's actually a combination of what his research and his findings is over the last um, 40 years. Conservation agriculture um, is also one of the more, most important things. How do you protect your soil? How do you protect your, your moisture in the soil? And also then increase also um, the fixation of nitrogen in the root zone itself. Then I'm gonna close off with this take home message. The Earth is 4.6 billion years old. And we, we can't really interpret that as too big, but if we condense that into 46 years, we, mankind, have been here for four hours. Our industrial revolution started one minute ago in, in that time scale. And in that time, we've destroyed more than 50% of the world's forests. And surely that's not sustainable. Luckily, we have what we call a stewardship program uh, across all our farming areas, but for the wine industry, there's more areas currently in wine farms on, on the stewardship in perpetuity registered than the actual area under vines itself a, as a contribution of the wine farmers to, to um, add to conservation and sustainable farming. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah.